Awo, shalom, <clears throat> shalom, aras, tefari. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. It's another, another Sabbath, another Shabbat. In this particular Shabbat, when we bring up the scriptures, bring up our chart right here. Here we're at, right here. And um, this is the 20, first of all, let's go to the book for a moment. To our compilation from online, you know, from um, Torah portion readings and feedings. This is the chart right here. And so here's where we're at. Here's where we're at, number 27. <clears throat> Um, last last uh, week's portion, 26, uh, Besamin Ten Yawum, and or Shemeni, Shemeni, the eighth day. Now, Fasika, Passover, Pesach, um, needs to be understood, you know, in, in the context. So the holy days, remember the Sabbaths, this is a Shabbat. There are weekly Sabbaths, and there are the annual Sabbaths. So when you're reading in the Bible, and you're studying the Scriptures, and you come across where Jah or where Yah is speaking about his um, Shabbat or his Sabbaths. You understand? He's speaking about uh, his Sabbaths and how the Sabbaths, his Sabbaths have been profaned and how his Sabbaths have been not kept. It's, it's important to understand what the Sabbath is and We'll perhaps do a, a live teaching, um, a lecture, actually, on the Sabbath um, from a recent article that we read that kind of reemphasized certain points um, concerning the Sabbath. And it was from the Tomorrow, uh, Tomorrow's World. I pointed that out. In fact, you could probably down, download maybe this or get a copy of having them send a copy to you. Um, it's some very interesting uh, um uh, brain food, you know, food for thought, brain food, you know, and um, be some righteous, I say some righteous Gentiles, hopefully you understand what we mean by, by righteousness, you understand, by righteousness, so when we say ones are righteous Gentiles, because Magic says when righteous Africans come together, and this is, this is, this is the banner, brothers and sisters, this is the banner. Now, the Sabbath and this whole Sabbath controversy, there's an article here that asks two main questions at the outset. Does it matter which day you call your Sabbath? And secondly, what does the scriptures say? But I just want to remind the Dek Amazamorit, the disciples and other brothers and sisters who tune in with us um, in these weekly uh, Sabbath portion readings and feedings, that when it says Sabbath, that there are two aspects to the Sabbath. There's the weekly Sabbath and there's the annual Sabbath. Now, we just went through um, the past week was a weekly Sabbath or um, um, Beye Semintu. You understand? Beye Semintu. Because some of I and I, brother and sister in the word sound and power, week, week, you know, so forth and so on in the use of the word week. But we don't want to get caught up on the on the minor, you know what I'm saying, on the minor points of the law, but get to the major points of Torah. So here is a, here's a PDF of this portion. In fact, we might seek to make available the PDF downloads of this for those who want to just study it um, on the computer and might not need a hard copy per se. This is this particular booklet, the inside of this particular booklet right here, um, Vayikra, the Hebrew book of Leviticus, Torah portion, volume three, um, introduction and the compilation by yours truly, Ene Ras Yadinos uh, Tefari. So this is the cover right here. Let's draw out on this one right here. And this week's um, this week's uh, portion, this week's uh, reading and feeding is known in the Hebrew as Tazria. Pretty soon you're going to recognize why we have these particular pictures here. Let's line this up so we can do a, a, a presentation right here. So here's a we're, here's a we're at right here. This is from that section. This is from the mysteries right there, which we're going to touch on the connection of this. Some might immediately see the connection 
you know, with um, this particular ancient uh, ancient glyph right there. Um, well, let's bring up some of the pictures that we wanted to utilize in this presentation. Some of them fell to the background as we did some stuff off off air as it was. Okay, bang, bang, right here. Let's see if we could bring bring the, one of our favorite um, pictures right here. So, what's what does this Torah portion contain? What 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 is this Torah portion, this reading and feeding on? And and, and why we're using this these these particular pictures um, right here to describe and articulate these. Um, pictures we call this on motherhood because it's what's contained in this portion so first let's start out with the name the name is the name of this Torah portion is Taz Ria in the Hebrew is Taz Taz Ria Taz Ria now some of the variations of it you know you can go to the wiki Wikipedia this is our compilation for each of the Torah portion readings and feedings right here and this is this is how we you know this is how we do it this is how we learn this is how we're studying this is how we're growing the week to week Torah portion readings and feedings that means that we're taking bite-sized portions of our readings and feedings every every um yes I'm into every Shabbat day you understand that's the new portion on the on the Shabbat Friday evening to Saturday and then this is what we, um, what we, what we feed on for the so-called six days. You know, this provides this provides the the the, the inspiration, the, the the brain food, and the bigger picture of things. This is also what prepares us. You understand to be God's people. You understand this will prepares us to do that which is pleasing in His sight. But also prepares us in many other ways that are not really so so obvious on the surface. So let's get into this Torah portion. This Torah portion is called Tazria. It's also known as Tazria or Tazria in certain pronunciation. Tazria, Tazria. Then some pronounce it um, Ashkenazis Tazria. But really more, when you study the, the, the Torah, it's really key, key tazriah, key tazriah. So let's go to the scriptures right here. Um, so it's Leviticus 12 and 1. So you can see right here we're in Leviticus 12 and 1. And if we haven't, I don't know if we have this program available as a free, it's freeware. So freely, you know, freely receive, freely give. I don't know if we have... Um, completed that um, working on a um, program, software, freeware, shareware, also some of the Amharic fonts as well. You know, having a resource page at www.lojsociety.org for some of these programs, like this particular software right here as as well. That which we find to be most um, most efficient. You understand? Um, we seek to share so we can be all on the same page as we use utilize the Schofield the Schofield um study Bible or Schofield reference Bible and those who have a, a copy or the downloadable copy, turn your Bibles to Leviticus twelve and one. Leviticus twelve and one. Now, if you recall last week's Torah portion reading and feeding, and let's see if we can remind you um, of this right here. Let's bring this up. So here we're at page um, 130. Let's get our hard copy right here. We're at page 130, 135. Is this 135? 135. We're on page 135. And 135 is um, Taz or Tazria. And that's the Hebrew word. Let's define it. It's a Hebrew word for she conceived. When you add the key, ki tazria, ki tazria, let's bring up Leviticus, this form right here. Ki tazria, 
the verse is verse two. So this this portion right here um, uh, consists uh, constitutes Leviticus twelve and one to Leviticus thirteen and fifty nine. You know some some of the weekly portions seem and appear to be longer, and some of them appear to be a little bit shorter. So this particular portion, this particular week weekly portion, appears to be only roughly like two chapters. You understand? So it begins in twelve and one, and it begins with speak. Two, when I see the un right there, we don't say the un. The un means not. It's, it's, it's a kind of an old archaic, archaic is it, uh, English Western archaicism, but it also has a very dubious meaning. So we don't put un unless we really mean that something is not. You know what I'm saying? So speak to the children of Israel, saying, if a woman have conceived seed, if a woman has gotten pregnant, if a woman has conceived seed, ki tazria. Let's go down to the Hebrew right here. And you can see we have the Hebrew right here. Ki tazria. So it says, um, the, 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 it's, it's, the, it's the which word? The 13th word and the first distinctive word. Ki taz, tazria. Ki tazria. So this is the section right. This is the word, but this qualifies it. Ki tazria. Ki tazria. Right. So this is the. This is why the portion is named what it's named when we look at the Hebrew. So the Hebrew weekly um, portions have distinctive names, as in our chart right here. Let us see if we can. Uh, to show you this chart right here, as you can see in our chart right here, it's the twenty twenty seventh or the twenty eighth. Now it depends on if it's twenty seven or twenty eighth, and we discussed this before. It depends on um, the luni solar, the lunar and solar luni solar Hebrew calendar that contains up to fifty five weeks. The exact number varies between fifty and what's called common years. And 54, 55 in leap years. In leap years, for example, last year was a leap year, 2011. 2014 is a leap year. 2016 is to be a leap year. Now, the parasha tazaria is read separately in those leap years. Now, in common years, for example, um, years that are not leap years, like 2012, this present year, 2013, um, 2015, 2017, and 2018, this parasha or this portion, this particular portion right here, right, that we call in Bamarinya, Bitaregiz, Bitaregiz, Bitaregiz is the Amharic of it, Bitaregiz, and in the Hebrew, Tazaria, Bitaregiz, Tazaria. Now, if you study the the whole linguistics of it, you'll find that there's a lot of correspondence between the two, and you probably can see the link, the bridge, um, and, and, and the rootage in that. But in these common years, such as this year, 2012, that's not a leap year, the portion called um, Tazaria, or Ki Tazaria, is combined, is combined with the next portion, this next portion right here that we call Be Men. Atu, bemenes atu, bemenes atu, bemenes atu, which in the Hebrew is called metzora, metzora. You see the link right here, metzora, metzora, metzora. Bamarinya, bemenes atu, ten. In 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 this particular the day of the day of cleansing. So this word for cleansing. Menasat, menasat to the link. So here's the point right here about this. In common years, like this year, that's not a leap year, this Torah portion is combined with the next Torah portion in order to achieve the, the prerequisite number of, of yearly, cyclic um, number of readings that's needed to fulfill that cycle a year. So in every year, in every lunar, lunar, solar, luni solar Hebrew calendar year, we complete all five books within the year. 
So when we talk about discipleship, it's very important to really get a good foundation. A good foundation, Christ, he taught the disciples, they say, his ministry for three and a half years. Roughly, that should be the time of a full discipleship, because I know there's a lot of questions and there's much that we want to respond to vis-a-vis the discipleship and the discipleship inquiries from the different brothers and sisters and, and mothers out there. So let, let us continue on, on that. We, we just touched on some of these aspects so you might understand why um, we decided to use these particular, you know, these particular um, pictures, you understand, to emphasize this particular Torah portion that begins off um, the context of, of this portion, due to the name, Bitaregiz, or Tazaria, which says, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived, Bitaregiz, if she has gotten pregnant. That's another way of saying it. If she has gotten pregnant, if she has conceived, if she's pregnant, if she has conceived and born, and given birth and taken it to full term and given birth to a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days according to the days of the separation for her. Now, the translation here says infirmity. We're going to get into some of this detail right here. Um, shall she be unclean? In other words, shall she be now, unclean, the whole idea about unclean and clean, um, Gentiles, from a Western Gentile um, misunderstanding, a lot of this is confused, in other words, when it says unclean. It's not just saying woman. See, see the way the white man and the Western white churches and, and Western Christianity has used this, has used this in a very sexist, sexist way. What we're talking about here, in this particular um Torah portion, and let's see if we can bring this up. What we're talking about here in this particular um, Torah portion, we're going to touch on that right there. Um, let's do this for a moment. Let's see if we can arrange so we can arrange some of the um, some of the images that we're going to use to help to uh, uh, teach this particular lesson here. And so we're going back to some of these pictures. I know you'll think of it as a goddess, but there's there's even a misconception about the whole idea of 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 the goddess. What is the goddess? Who is the goddess? From a, a biblical perspective, a goddess is a daughter. You understand? It's a daughter of God, a divine daughter, a daughter of God. Just like a god, I've said, yeah, gods is a son or the sons of God. So it says in this. In this uh, new age, or this age that we are coming to, he will pour out his spirit, right? He will pour out his spirit upon the sons and the daughters. And this is part of the Joel prophecy. And notice the key words in Joel's prophecy as we speak about 2012 in this particular um, uh, cosmo um, genesis, this, this, the whole cosmo genesis, this topic matter we, 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 we need to discuss and, and, and understand about. And the interesting thing is we're moving into a time when um, many people are going to become interested in a lot of this so-called weird stuff that some of us have, you know, devoted our, our, our life to, you know, all, all the unconventional you know, biblical stuff and, and African stuff and so-called um, Ethiopian and Rastafari, all that non-Western, non-traditional stuff, because the answers to, to, to what's going on in the present time are not to be found from a white Western Gentile perspective. You see, that's the old paradigm. We're coming, th this time that we're in is even a time of rebirth. This is why the Torah portion, you know, there is, there is a, a message within the message within the message. First thing you're going to learn is the, is the basic, you know what I'm saying, um, the, 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 the surface. What's the surface message of this? So let's get an overview of this. This is the 27th weekly Torah portion. Usually as the 27th weekly Torah portion. Right, um, in the annual Judaic cycle of of Orit Minbab or Nibab Nibabot, the Torah reading or readings, and it's the fourth. This now is the fourth one 
in this particular book, which is the book of Leviticus, also known as Vayikra, 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 and and this is bring this over so you can. This is the particular cover of the book. We've 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 touched on that. We've addressed that already, right? This is the book. Um, let's let's uh, put this. Yeah, let's leave this here for 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 a moment, and then we'll go back to the the Mariam Kedatim Gemariam and make that particular link there. Now, what it constitutes is Leviticus chapter twelve, verses one to Leviticus chapter thirteen, verse fifty nine. So that's the first thing one needs to do. Just just download the data. Just download it before they analyze the data, before they, um, you know, before you, you do a commentary on the data. Just read over, you know, read over the portion reading. This is what we would suggest to the students, to the Dek Amezamorit, to other brothers and sisters who are studying with us and would like, Yah willing, over time, little by little, you always have to make progress in, in the acquaintance, in, in the knowledge of the truth. First of all, you need to put in, um, see, your overstanding, your overstanding is based on the data. You, you know, if you put faulty data, like, into the equation, you understand, then the, the results are going to be based on the quality, you understand, on the quality of the data. Not so much the quantity, you, you know what I mean, but the quality. But the main thing for us is that in order for the Holy Spirit and, and this is in your personal walk to the brothers and sisters who are who are who are taking this really seriously and 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 who seriously have contemplated the real um 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 life and eternal life issues that are concerned in the glorious gospel of the King of Kings and His Christ, then you need to study to show yourself approved. That's first and foremost. There's no idea. In the scripture, with our black Lord and Savior, Joshua, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, of ignorance being bliss. No, well, we'll tell you, I'll tell you, ignorance is, in that sense, is your e-bliss. But ignorance being bliss is not the way of our black Lord and Savior. You know what I'm saying? It's not the way of I and I, big black brother, Joshua, Jesus Christos, who the world calls Jesus Christ. That's not his way. He says study. You know, we have to study. He says in his own testimony, have you not written, have you not read what is written? Have you not read what is written? Haven't you read what is written? Is it not written? You know, so all throughout, we will find the importance of the testimony. You know what I'm saying? The importance of of the teaching, the importance of the truth. You understand? So the teaching and the learning of this is, is very important. So I'm saying that to say because some of our folks, you know, maybe some have difficulty and trouble in reading, you know, because we know that we're living in a, in a world and a society where many have been disadvantaged, you know, might not have had an opportunity for a so-called good um, education, you know, um, however, we live in a society, too, at this present time, which um, has many means that if one is willing, you know, and, and, and shows the, the initiative, you know, if you, have, if you know you have trouble reading, you know, and you don't read the way you should read, there are a lot of options. You know, and now that we're living in a not bullying, it's not nice to joke about people in certain ways kind of culture, Ones who, you know, I remember growing up that, you know, you, you, you had to go to the school of hard knocks. It, it seems to be a little different right now in this transitional phase that we're passing through. But that being a, a whole other issue, the main thing we're trying to encourage, we're trying to encourage reading. This is the point of what we're saying. We are desperately trying to encourage reading so that ones can find the truth for themselves. Because when one knows the truth for themselves, the way they interact with that is much different than when one is still in a polite religious sense of doubt. You understand? You know what I mean? There's no benefit to doubt. You understand? There's no benefit to doubt. So study is important. So this portion is, is two chapters, Leviticus 12 and Leviticus 13. And we as black Jews and elect Arastafari in the diaspora, in the America, this North country, 
in exile. You can say we read it in the 27th or the 28th Sabbath. So we can either read this, study this, this particular um, Shabbat, or in the Shabbat coming, pairing it up or combining it with uh, Metzora or Bemenaz Atuken, which is the next Torah portion reading and feeding. And, and if you look at the chart right here, once again, bring up the Sabbath house reading, the Torah, the Torah, um, the Torah readings right here for 2011 going into 2012. This is the updated one at www.lojsociety.org. You can go there. You can download it free. You understand the PDF and, you know, print it out about 13 or so pages. And here's where we're at right now, page 5. We're at the 27th. We call it from the Royal Amharic Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals, Haile Selassie's Bible. We call it Bitaregis. It's Taregis. Bitaregis. In the Hebrew, it's called Tazaria or Ki Tazaria. Tazaria, Ki Tazaria. Here you see the first portion of it is, is Torah. Here's the Navim and the Burit, um, the Burit uh, Hadasha. Let's, let's see, we went a little bit. One little bit of head rate here. You could, uh, okay, want to, want to actually go, go over, bring this over here, so you can see the extension of the column, the three part, the the tripartite um, series of reading. That doesn't mean that one has to, has to. Um, in fact, one sometimes you, when you read, you don't understand exactly. The, all the ins and outs of it. It's, it's not really required. At it, it, First of all, you have to get familiar with the subject matter. And this is why we just encourage, you know, for the Shabbat, ones go through, you know, go through the readings. You know, go through the readings with a willingness to understand. You understand? And then take down the notes of what you don't understand. And just be quite honest. You know, just be quite truthful. What is this? You know, you have to be rude. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, um, in the spirit, of 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 Jah and his Moshiach, and or Jah and our Black Lord Jah and Christ, you know, take notes and um, hopefully in the brotherhood and in our discipleship, you know, gathering our correspondence and as well as when Jah willing we have FaceTime, we'll be able to get into those sort of questions. But you know, um, definitely, definitely read. It's important to get the data so that the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit magnetizes itself to its, itself, which is its word. So the word is an aspect, the Bible, the scripture, of the Almighty, of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit communicated this word to, um, as the Bible says, um, holy men. You understand? And the prophets and the, and the people who, who, who were the vessels for communicating this. So as we have a desire and a love of his word, and we put that data in, then the Holy Spirit, you understand, will be able to guide us. But if you're empty, you understand, if you're empty, if all you know is 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 um is is, is Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But you don't sit down and you read the Bible and study the Bible and and you and you put it in. You understand? You, you know, people say, well, I don't like to read the Bible because I don't understand what's going on. You like to pray? Yeah, yeah. I, I pray, I pray, pray, look, praise God, so forth. So. Why don't you read it and then ask God to enlighten enlighten your ignorance and then and then do the work that you need to do. Work out your salvation as the Bible says. But that's a different point. So now we go off on little um um transcendental, you know, tangents at times, you know, just to focus on what in our spirit we regard that the Almighty wants this to be communicating. Reading is fundamental. You know what I mean? Because um some of you will wonder why. Well, why all all these ones are in that spirit and that vibe? I just don't get what, what what because maybe you're outside the loop because you know you didn't download what you needed to download spiritually. You know what I mean? You don't have you don't have you don't have that 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 data. So if you don't have the data, you can't really get the divine intel. There's nothing for the Holy Spirit to stimulate. That. The Holy Spirit's not going to be you know do redundancy of of then you know making you a prophet. 
when the prophets already have come before. That, that's why you know the part with Yeshua, where um, the one says, "I got, I got what five? I, I, I got five or so brothers." You know, I got five or so brothers and, and send one, you know, send one to them to warn them not to end up in this place, so forth and so on. And then Abraham says something to the effect of, well, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear that, you know. Um, and that was what Yeshua was, was, was telling us. So there's a reason. And that wasn't just for back in that time. You see, that wasn't just for back in that day. You know, saying that was for then, that was for before then, that's for now, that's for even later on coming up. You over? So, reading is fun to the mental. It's fundamental. Now, we as black Jews elect Rastafari, Ethiopian Hebrews, faithful Ethiopians in the diaspora. Um, we read it in the 27th. We read it in the 27th or the 28th. Sabbath, the Senbet, after the Simchat Torah, after the Fisha uh, Le'orit or Ze'orit, um, after the joy of Jah's law, the joy of the Torah, generally in the month of April, and, and we are generally right now in the month of April, and this is for, this is for April um, 21st, 2012, the Sabbath for April 21st, 2012. So, with that being um, understood, you understand. With that being understood, in other words, in this portion, the, in this in this particular um, year, what kind of year is it? Is it a leap year or is it a common year? That's the first question we have to answer. If it is a leap year, you understand, then it's separately. This is what the the initial the initial intro to Tazria Ki Tazria Be Taragis. You understand? If she gets pregnant, if she conceives, what it's telling us in a common year like this particular year, 2012, next year, 2013, um, the year um, after that, skipping over 2014 and 2015, skipping over 2016, getting 2017, and then the year after 2018, uh, a common year. So we'll, we'll focus on right now 2012 is not a leap year. Therefore, the, the portion, the parsha called Tazaria, Ki Tazaria, is combined with the next parsha, Metzora, or from the Ethiopic, the Amharic perspective. In other words, from Amharic, Be Taragis is linked with the Menzatuken, or Menzat, as Tazaria is linked with Metzora. All right? Um, to help achieve the number of weekly readings, to be aligned, you understand, as above, so below, to be aligned, right, to be in alignment. Now, a summary of this particular um, portion, Kitaz Ariya Bitaregiz, is one, two, three. You know, there's, 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 there's three um, main portions. So if you're taking notes, you understand, and and let's bring up the let's bring up the PDF for uh, Vayikra Vayikra again, right? So this is this is a little bit of what we've gone through right here, all right. We're gonna try to put the PDFs up there so that um, the the downloads of this also available the Torah portion because some are you know some some prefer hard copies like we do and only utilize the digital copies as necessary or have both of them we're going to make this uh you know make this available and those who hear this and don't see it out there just drop us a line about it all right feel no way iron sharp and iron all right um anyway here is the two two doves right here this is um the poor widow's offering by an artist called F uh, frederick uh goddard goddard you know, saying the two offerings, you know, as symbolically, you know, I, I kind of see this as the same way in ancient Egypt. You know, saying in the same way in ancient Egypt. Let's see if we still have this. I think we still have this up here. Let's see if we can bring this up here. This is from another teaching. We haven't uploaded it as of yet, but hopefully you'll see you'll see this video where we touch on this after. You know, saying after after in, in this particular order right here. But we've already recorded it 
but um, have not presented it because we're in the Sabbath time. We want to focus on uh, remembering the Sabbath, first of all. The first act of, of faithfulness is remembering it. The second act is, is, is keeping it um, set apart. So right here we have, notice this right here, this idea of the, you know, the offerings, you know. And so I looked at this picture right here. Um, where's the picture right here? If I looked at this picture from, the, from Vayikra right here of her offering. I don't know if you got the idea, you know, so forth and so on. You know, and some of the Egyptian hieroglyphs, some of the gestures, you know, the gestures. It's not like sign language in a sense. You know, that all cultures seem to, you know, like they say, be happy. Show me a happy face in, in Chinese. Show me a happy face in African. Show me a happy face in Europe, in South America. You know what I mean? It's, there, there'd be a lot of similarities, in other words. Now, here's the contents right here, the summary of the contents. First is what? Childbirth. Secondly is skin disease. Thirdly is clothing. Now, this particular portion... Tazaria, the 27th, the 27th portion, is actually connected, and we can almost say, in a sense, it generates, it begins in, in a series of study, in, in the overall series of study, from chapter 11, chapter Asara'an, it begins from chapter 11. Now, chapter 11 is the last portion of last week's uh, Torah portion, Reading and Feeding, and in that particular Torah portion, reading and feeding, there were, I think, three, there, there were two or three parts to that in the summary. And let's just backtrack right here. And in Shemeni, in Shemeni, there was the consecration. Jah consecrated the tabernacle. Um, Nadab and Abihu, Nadav and Avihu, the strange fire. Then thirdly was the dietary, there were dietary laws. We as Rastafari will say um, um, liberty, not die yet, die yet. Did you die yet? You know what I'm saying? No, livet. You know, livetary, you know, it was Levitical is really the connection. Now the root and the groundation for these particular kash root was called in the Hebrew and, and by the Jews, um, kash root, kash root. You probably know it as kashor or kosher. You understand know kosher, kash root. So the kash root laws are described in Leviticus chapter eleven. Now it's interesting because in the West they call uh, what, what they call bankruptcy. Don't they call bankruptcy? They call bankruptcy. Um, they call bankruptcy chapter eleven. You know, if you hit chapter 11, you, 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 you've hit a state of um, bankruptcy, right? Isn't that kind of interesting right there? And on a, on a certain health level, that's perhaps very, very true. So we're going to bring this up here, this food chart. Because we said, how can we describe this right, right now? Because it's a lot of details in it. So, you know, in other words, what modern kind of, what modern kind of hieroglyph or what modern kind of symbolic logic can explain? So when you see the pyramid, most of you all know that the pyramid is the whole food chart thing. You understand that's the pyramid symbolizes the food chart. And then I think we had actually found uh, a Hebrew in our in our particular search. I think we found a Hebrew um, uh, pyramid chart in the Hebrew. And then we also have some of them hard, too, as well. But it was just kind of interesting because the one in the Hebrew kind of showed, I think they were showing from the ancient Israelites. In fact, let's bring up men's art to, men's art to right here. This is men's art to right here because this deals with um, a holy God, a holy people, right? This, this is what this portion really is speaking about, speaking about that, uh, that, that, we have a holy El, a holy Ha'el, a holy Ha'el. We will, in the Revelation, a holy Ha'ila Selassie, you know what I mean? A holy power of the Trinity, God of Abraham, Yishak, and Yaakov. We have a holy, a set-apart, a set-apart God. 
You know, so there's a lot of gods out there, lords and other things that people got, but but the true God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, he is the Yete Kedese, he is Kedus, Kedus, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin. And we are to be a holy people to him. You get it? Holy God, holy people. You know what I mean? You know, um, you know, um, <laughs> I want to say, like, a, you know, if you have a good day, you have a good life. And I was thinking about, there was talking about happy wife, happy life. You know, how people say happy wife, happy life. Well, it, you know, it does apply. You understand? In, in principle, just whether you are orientated or disoriented, are you pointing to the east or elsewhere? Anyway, a holy God and a holy people. Now, here is speaking about the law, the law of the leper's cleansing. Right, and it's Leviticus, Leviticus chapters uh, 13, you understand, um, 14 and 15, beginning off at 13. Now, 13 is actually the end of this week's portion. We just kind of like bringing this up, using this kind of um, symbol here, you understand. It's kind of interesting because this is actually one of their pictures, not, I don't think this is one of our pictures, one of our Rastafari, a black conscious artist, and you can tell this is a black man here. I, I, I look at this like as a Moses type figure, you understand, or maybe even an Aaron type figure, you understand, or Elijah type figure. But it's very clear that he is he is comforting and healing, you know, the sick, or perhaps in this case, a um, leper. So you can also see some of the the racial dynamic, like when 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 Moses put his hand in his bosom. You understand? And he pulled it out and it was leprous and then he put it back in and it turned to his other flesh or it turned to his Ethiopian his Ethiopian um complexion again. So that's an aspect right there. Leper, leprosy, sin, healing and cleansing. Right? Now so the food aspect, we didn't go into all the detail of the food aspect because we hope that when most of the brothers and sisters, you know, take the time out to read and go over it, the first thing they'll be like, wow, this is interesting. It's like in Rastafari, you know, we don't deal with certain type of foods, that that that's becomes a, a aspect. Why it, does that become so important? It's based here in the scripture. Um, Leviticus, Leviticus 11 tells us that a holy God and a holy people. A holy God needs a holy people. A holy God requires a holy people. A holy people are holy because of their relationship with a holy God. So the first aspect, if you look in the Schofield Study uh, Reference Bible, and you're here on page was it 139 in, in the in the particular study version that that we like to use, whether it's the internet copy or whether it's you know whether it's a PDF that we have. Um, or if it's a hard copy of it, you'll see that there is a sub um, a subtext after the after the the, the the title chapter eleven, right? I don't know if we can show this right here. No, it's a kind of well, 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 actually we can. Let's see, right? Then you'll notice this right right here. You'll notice this right here. You see that one right there? You see how it has that one? This is the first part of this holy holy. You understand this holy, holy connection. Now, what do we mean by that? We mean that when we go to chapter chapter 12, let's bring this down. You see how chapter 12 has a 2 right there. And then it has a 2. So the second aspect is this one right here, Betar You understand? It says a holy people, a holy God, a holy people. Secondly, is the law of motherhood. The law of motherhood, that's the second, here you see right here, the second aspect, the law of motherhood. Then when you go to chapter 13, you notice there's a three there. The third aspect of this holy people relationship, right, it says leprosy, or we can call it the so-called skin dis-ease. And then it speaks about how this dis-ease, let's turn that off right there, how this dis-ease um, may be manifested in the house, how this disease may be manifested, you know, on on the person, on their skin, uh, the epidermis, the upper layers, or may be very deep, going to the deeper layers, how it may be in clothing, actually, transmitted from clothing. And the first thing this, 
Yeah, I know it's gonna spook some folks out. <laughs> but the first thing I think about is you know how like a lot of people get a lot of free clothing and people wear a lot of clothing, go to a lot of places and, and try on kind of a lot of clothing, but they don't know who been wearing or people might return a lot of clothing. You know, and you know whether the people really, as we would say back in days, whether they wash their ass. You know what I mean? And and um, a holy people might have done that when they wasn't conscious of the al kidan when they wasn't conscious of. But a holy people must be and or become conscious of that. So when we talk about Ayla, Ayla, Ayna is Ayla. You see what I'm saying? Right? So we want to be spiritual outlaws. You understand? Let us understand the word. You understand? The word now puts the context of what this Isla, Idus, or holy relationship is all about. So now here that we, we're going to backtrack to chapter 11, because actually one consistent is like, it's like they say a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, so to speak, right? You know what I mean? So we have to link with the, the last portion and, 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 and remind you that this is a consistent idea. So although we're into the second aspect of this, the law of motherhood, which, is, which now hopefully will explain some of the reasons why. Let's move this over here. Let's uh, take this. You should, know where, you, know, you should know where we're at right now with this. Well, actually, we can probably put this up here, right? Um, and this is the reason why we have these particular pictures right here. Now, this right here, as you can see, is a womb. You understand? Perhaps one of the most beautiful images. It's not about the circle. It's, it's also beat geometry, too. You know, even with men and particular shapes, like, you know... Um, it's interesting, you know. It's, it's it's really interesting because we kind of go round and round as 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 humanity. Some men say, yeah, they like their woman, you know. Um, um, uh, see, there's 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 ways of saying this that have become PC and everything like that. But the reason why we have fat with a PH, you know, because it's it's a degree. You know, you have to be on, on a level to really understand that. Now everybody's getting it. You understand? Um, and, and you see social ideas are also changing, too, because we've been living in the image of the beast. We've been living in the image of white folks. You know, the whole world has, and, and, and even white people have been living in the image of white people. You understand? That's why many of them, you know, if not want to be black, you understand, they appropriate a lot of black, blackity blackisms. You know what I mean? Because it's more living. It's it's more real. You know what I mean? It's more so forth and so on. So, so this shows that the Gentile mind, you understand, um, it lacks, you know, it lacks seriously. Like we said before, that the white man has ruined manhood. So we have ones talking about the patriarchy. We, 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 you know, even the matriarchy, do we really even know what real matriarchy really is? I mean, we know there's a lot of good mothers out there that have been trying, you know, um, some, you know, you know, of course, everything is the exception, but we want to talk about the rule. So we study in Torah, we, we are learning about the rule, and then we can focus on, you know, the exception. And I saw this particular um, picture right here, which I thought was interesting. You know, trying to trying to come up with a couple of images right here, and this is um, African woman abroad. Um, um, Juan Juan uh, Juan Namke, um, Africa, Africa. I think African woman abroad. I just like the the kind of art, the kind of you know um, imagery there. It's clear. You see, this is a woman. She has a she has a child. She seems like either she's coming out of a city or perhaps this is a road back into a city or a village it's not so clear right here but the main part of the image is the is is the mother and the child that's what this particular portion um Taz Aria mainly is focused on but it's the second aspect of 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 the holy god and the holy people the holy god and the holy people um uh, relationship is the second aspect of that. So let's once again bring this 
bring this forward right here. And we're going to discuss some of some of the images um, that we have right here. Like you might know the so-called Willendorf, the woman of Willendorf, or the 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 original Venus. You can say you might know this image, this imagery right here. Some would say from a Western Gentile perspective, they will say this is the goddess. No, this is the, you could say this is the mother. This is the this is the Venus. Let's say the mother type. A lot of that God is stuff. Because people came to define what God is. They can't even spell what God is. But anyway, this is coma right here. This is coma as the woman and child. Very very important. You know, we've been talking a lot about um, the witness of the stars and the astro theology and the connection, especially with 2012 and this present time. We're going to go into a little bit more on this. It's a woman seated. I don't know if you can see this. It's a woman seated holding. Let's, let's, let's zoom in so you can get a, uh, you might, you might be able to over oh, that right there. Okay, here we go. Um, it's a woman seated on the throne, right? And, and this is, takes place in, in the, in the, I think Virgo, is it Virgo or Libra constellation? I think it's Vir Virgo, the Virgin, Virgo constellation, right? Um, and she's holding, you know what I'm saying? She's holding uh, a son. She's holding uh, a child right here. So it's a woman seated, right? Holding that, holding the child right there. We're going to get into a little bit more of that. And the first aspect of um, the witness of the stars, those who have a copy or have read it, before or can refer to it um, after this, you know, go check that out and you might be able to see why, we, you know, why we're using, why we're seeking to use this as a particular, as a particular um, reference, reference right here. Now, here's a black child, um, I guess his mother is pregnant and again, and um, he's listening to, holding her womb, listening. And I just thought that, that's just a, a real good picture because we already see white people and actors, actresses, and crazy folks doing all kinds of stuff. Oh, so so becoming mother, so so becoming mother, and you, you know, on on if you look at that, who's that actress or somebody? Don't even mention the name. You probably know who I'm talking about. Um, but you, you know, see them on the cover doing the mother ho the mother sh the motherhood bit. They are trying to reset. You understand? Reset an image of motherhood from a a um European a white Gentile perspective. And you know, that wouldn't be so bad if the Gentiles knew what the knew what they were doing. Unfortunately they do not. It's the arrogancy that continues, you know, to drive them, you know saying, to try to um you know, to try to uh uh represent okay this is the clothing to represent to the world an image that the world should follow when they don't even know you understand when they don't even know who they really are or how they even got white you see until white folks can explain how they really got white i mean really you know stop lying you know as long as they're lying how can we trust them if they, if they can't explain to us the obvious things then how can they, you know, we trust them about things that that we have to trust them about. If they're lying about things that we can clearly we can clearly see, how can we trust them about things that we can um, not see? Now, what I want to bring up right here is this particular um, uh, CD that we had did previously. Uh, yeah, we got a whole heap of. Hopefully, the, the computer won't crash right here. We got a whole heap of. Um, of documents open um, to share with you on this subject matter, but it's a uh, woman's what was it, what's it called? Woman's woman's worth. It's an article that we had wrote previously. Okay, this is another study right here. I think we can we can close out of this one right there. Um, woman's worth. It's a it's a it's a CD that we had did some. Some years ago, I wanted to show you a, a, a cover of the copy, a copy of the cover right here. Um, let's see, um, uh, woman's worth, and I think it would be timely for 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 sisters 
to take a listen to that because there's a lot of kind of issues that rightfully women have because that's not think if I was born a so called yeah, they say a woman, you know, I mean injustice is injustice, you know, or just because you're not a woman or even for women if you're not a man. You see some of the the sisters know some of the injustices like why black men, you know, some of them can put themselves in into that experience, you know? And we as brothers need to also recognize the same is true, you know, with our sisters, mothers, um daughters, wives, et al, et cetera, et cetera. So let's bring a woman's woman's worth. We thought we had put it on the side over here. Perhaps we did. Um, okay, uh, let's bring this up before we change this. Okay, into my father's house, and we'll discuss this from then uh, coming forward. Our um, approach to the cosmogenesis, so we can understand what is this time really all about. Looking at the data, looking at the facts, the evidence for ourselves. All right. Um, so, woman's worth. I want you. I want the sisters who are interested to get a copy. You know, to get a copy of um, to get a copy of that as 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 they as they can. Just kind of point that out as a subject matter that we want to address a little bit more because there's a lot of questions that um, I know the sisters have with this because even I and I have with this like where it speaks about. The woman is unclean. In what context is it? Well, I mean, if you study in the context, there are more situations where a man has, you know, whether he's a priest, whether he's a Levite, whether he's a, a stranger, whether he's an Israelite, you know, where he can be unclean too. You see what I'm saying? And there's always this idea when it talks about, like, say, menstruation or so forth and so on. You have to understand that when we are dealing with issues of life, you know, we have to have certain rules for what do they call uh, uh, medical, what do you call it, medical prescriptions, medical, medical, um, they have this saying that they use nowadays, um, like, like it's because of medical reasons, you know, we need to, and especially when you see what's going on now, you know what I mean? If you see what's going on nowadays with all the science technology that we have. But we're getting some of those nuances of that particular issue. The main point about this right here is this is the law of motherhood. Now, what, what, what they found out, actually, they found out, actually, recently, I've mentioned this in another video, I've mentioned this right here because... It's 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 in tune with what the um what the subject you know what the subject of of of, of I and I reasoning is I think okay here 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 we here we got the picture we'll bring that up um this is this is a, a copy of a working copy you could say of of of, of the cover right here that we um for woman's worth is what we try to attack some of those issues you know um concerning woman. And um, from the Bible, what does the Bible really say? You understand about the about woman and about a woman's worth? Because if you were to, you know, follow the the white Gentile caliphate Christianity on that particular subject matter of um, what a woman is worth, you understand. Of course, now with 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 liberation struggles, you know, with uh, the the feminist movement. You know, a lot has changed because of that. But the fe we wouldn't have a feminist movement if we didn't have a black movement, a movement for black people, a black power movement. We wouldn't have a feminist movement if the black male didn't get tired of living the way he was living and his black female didn't also get tired and support and uphold her black male's hand and the two of them, for the family and the children's sake, you, you know, put that black power fist up in the ear and grew out their afro together. But white folks saw that. <laughs> and they said, we got to do something about that. So what they did was use actually women's issues. 
you know, as we study that that whole um, conspiracy, that 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 higher level of COINTELPRO to stop the rise of uh, of the black messiah, basically to stop the rise of the black male, because the only way to keep down black people and the lost sheep is to keep down the black male. Remember what Yah said? Yah didn't say, "I've called my son and my daughter out of Egypt." Even though his daughters were called out, you know what I mean? His sons and his daughters. He pours his spirit out upon the sons and the daughters, Joel says, as we're moving into this age of Aquarius, some say, and outpouring. You know what I'm saying? But he also pours out wrath, too. So, remembering the Sabbath, keeping it set aside, um, us doing what we have to do, you understand, to stay in, 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 in good standing and righteous standing with the God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshi, is very important. So when the time of pouring comes, that we would not get wrath or rottedness, rottenness, rotted, wrathedness poured out on us, but instead we would have the Holy Spirit in truth poured out upon us. 